Today I'm going to be showing you guys a pretty much perfected Ice Shards Sorcerer build, which is probably the best Sorcerer build in the game if you're interested in just absolutely blasting through things, getting from level 50 to 100 as quickly as humanly possible without needing crazy gear or anything like that. The build is just really good by default, and once you get even better gear, as you can see, you end up just absolutely annihilating everything. A ton of people have mana issues with Ice Shard Sorcerer, so we're going to be covering a lot of ways that you can fix that in today's video. And as you can see, even on bosses that are significantly higher level than us, not only can we absolutely nuke them, but we also have literally infinite mana against them. This build went through a crazy amount of testing, and there's actually a decent amount of different ways to set it up. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over everything with you guys. And there's also going to be some extra gameplay at the end, and I'll go over some gameplay tips if you're interested. But as you can see, the damage is unbelievably good. And this is just an incredibly fun way to play. You literally just fly through the map at Mach 10, one-shotting everything in your way, even when the mobs are significantly higher level than you. I'm sure you guys can tell how good the build is through the gameplay, so let's just get into the skills here. Uh, first off, I want to mention that, like always, the entirety of the build will be posted over on the website. So if you want to see the Paragon board, skill points, etc., stats on gear, the full list of legendaries, everything, make sure to check out the link in the description. Also, the entirety of this video would not be possible without my friend Plato Bear's help. Make sure to check out him, link in the description. He will be posting updated versions of the build for you guys. And he also recently posted an Uber Lilith kill on Sork if you're interested in seeing that. But pretty much all the gameplay is his. I helped him set up the build, theorycraft, perfect it, etc. But my Sork is currently stuck playing Firewall because I want to make an updated version on Firewall for you guys. And Plato just has significantly better gear for ice shards and stuff. So he was kind enough to let me use his gameplay. So we're going to be showing his build. Big thanks to him. And obviously the build gets the stamp of approval. There's a couple things that I would change a little bit, but all that I will mention. And also that will also be posted on the website. So first off, let's talk about the skills here. We're going to be putting two points into Firebolt. Right now, this is one point because he accidentally specced Frostbolt. You do not need Frostbolt. You want to put two points into Firebolt because you have to put the points there and also because we're going to be using the firebolt enchant literally just to apply burn by default talk more about that later but there's like 10 different reasons to want to apply burn so that's really good then we have ice shards obviously because this is an ice shards build uh not going to talk too much about it because this is the point of the build but the benefit of ice shards versus some of the other skills is that it has a guaranteed vulnerable application in single target and the amount of damage that it does is really good also because it is a cold skill and has decent lucky hit chance we could take great advantage of the avalanche key passive so we can pretty much have infinite mana you can also do a whole bunch of extra damage with frozen enemies damage with cold etc and also because we are leveling up our ice shards it's going to do a crazy amount of damage we pair this with the ice shards enchant which is going to do a ton of aoe for us anytime we simply just freeze an enemy so there's a lot of different reasons to use ice shards most people just prefer it honestly on sorg the other builds are very very good as well but ice shards is what most people prefer and i can definitely see why because it is incredibly powerful and it's a ton of fun to play with for the remainder of our skills pretty much like every other sorg build we're going to be using frost nova the main reason for frost nova here where a lot of the other builds need it for the vulnerable it's really good for us for the vulnerable and aoe but we're mainly using it for the freeze and then you pair that with the ice shards enchant and anytime you freeze ice shards will literally just spawn out of the air and they'll just absolutely nuke everything also one of our legendaries takes advantage of enemies that are frozen so we get a whole bunch of extra damage there and also damage within our skill tree etc so freezing enemies on demand is really good and we're going to rank this at max because we want the cooldown to be as low as humanly possible and then we're going to go into ice armor ice armor is like kind of weak we're really only using this just because it is an on-demand barrier it counts as a defensive skill for multiple other things that we take advantage of and also it's just for sur some survivability in terms of the barrier but but sork is a little squishy so the barrier is definitely helpful there and then we have teleport uh teleport is unbelievably powerful it's an incredibly low cooldown it's only a five second cooldown while having the teleport unique chest which we'll talk about you do not need the unique chest but that makes it build significantly better but you get 30% damage reduction after you use the teleport. You can you know, obviously teleport through mobs, teleport is unstoppable, and with the unique chest, it's going to stun mobs, so you can deal extra damage versus stunned, and it also pulls them, which is incredibly powerful and just makes the build significantly smoother to play, and you can get the cooldown to basically two seconds, because if you hit multiple enemies, which you're going to be doing with the suck in effect, you're going to reduce the cooldown literally to two seconds, so you can just teleport around like a psycho which is a ton of fun and makes the build infinitely easier to play and i don't think the build will be nearly as much fun without teleport we also go into a flame shield for a similar reason as ice armor it's basically an immunity which is insanely powerful to just have on the build also it counts as a barrier counts as a cooldown for us and it's going to give us some movement speed and you can even spec into healing with it if you so prefer so flame shield is pretty insane you can also get a guaranteed immobilize through flame shield 
if you were to use an aspect for it, which is not too bad, but the cooldown is rather long, so you pretty much only use this as an oh crap button, I might die, or for the movement speed or something. When it comes to the last skill here, you actually have multiple options. Um, so personally, I would recommend uh, Meteor here. The reason for Meteor is that it has an immobilize effect, which is good for two different reasons, one of our legendaries and also one of our passives. That's the literal only reason that we use it, but it is a little bit clunky and there is an alternative option to applying immobilize in the form of unique gloves, which I'll talk about the upsides and downsides of. Meteor is a little clunky and if you don't really like playing with it because you have to play rather particularly to take advantage of this immobilize. I would just recommend using the gloves, which we'll talk about for a way easier play style, and then instead putting Inferno on, which actually has a pretty low cooldown and it will just work as basically a pull in effect. Alternative to Inferno, you could run Deep Freeze just for like in invulnerability basically, or you could just use the skill points elsewhere. And again, for the enchants, we're going to be using uh, Firebolt enchant for the guaranteed burn application. You just deal extra damage via applying burn with any of your skills. So that is really powerful for us for reasons that we'll get into. And also we're using the Ice Shards enchant like mentioned to basically give us a ton of AOE, which we otherwise wouldn't have much of because Ice Shards is mainly a single or duo target spell. All right, when it comes to skill tree, you wanna slap, here, let me move myself. You wanna slap two points into Firebolt and then you wanna go obviously into Ice Shards and you want the guaranteed vulnerable application with Ice Shards. You can make an argument for the other thing that gives you extra damage while you have a barrier active, but you want vulnerable up as much as possible because it's incredibly powerful. Anytime that you're fighting a mob that isn't frozen via Frost Nova, they're not gonna be vulnerable. So being able to apply it guaranteed just by using your core skill is really good. Way too good to not use, especially cause you can get, you know, hundreds percent of uh, vulnerable damage. So. Definitely recommend that. And then you want to put one point into the mana and then three into elemental dominance. So you just do 9% extra damage. That is really good. Now we're just going to drop two points into flame shield. And as you can see, we have some item contribution for this because we have ranks of defensive skills, which we'll talk about with the gear. We go into one point just for the movement speed. If you want a little more survivability, you could alternatively go into the flame shield heal, but we don't really have the points. You're very starved for points. So we're omitting this for now, but that is some pretty free survivability you could grab if you feel like you need some sort of healing. Alternatively, you can just spam health potions when you, press frame when you press flame shield because flame shield is literally an immunity anyway, so not a big deal. Now we're going to put some points into teleport here for the uh, damage reduction, and we actually have seven ranks of teleport just through our gear, so we don't really need to rank this up. The cooldown is already perfectly low enough, and then, you know, you get the 30% damage reduction, which is pretty insane. Don't really need to talk too much about teleport. And we're going to actually max out our Frost Nova because reducing the cooldown on this is incredibly important because Frost Nova is not only our AoE vulnerable, but it's pretty much all of our AoE. And we do a crazy amount of extra damage to enemies that are frozen. And if we kill four enemies that are frozen, the cooldown then gets reduced to nine seconds and we have two charges of this. So this ends up being up pretty often. And obviously we're going to grab the vulnerable application with this no brainer. Then we go one point into Elemental Attunement because we have a pretty decent amount of lucky hit chance with this build and nearly 100% crit. So we'll have a decent likelihood to every once in a while just reset one of our defensive skills. It's not really worth building into too much. You could take the point out of this and go into the heal. I just think it's nice to have one point just for the chance of resetting a cooldown like a Frost Nova or a Flame Shield. But it's not going to happen too often. But hey, it will happen sometimes and maybe it'll save you. And then we're going to go into Ice Armor. I'm not even putting points into this because we have ranks of this on our gear, but... If you're early on into the build and you don't have ranks on your gear, you want to put one point into this and then another point potentially into the mana. This is mana regeneration, not generation. They are two different things. This is only going to increase your base regen rate by 25%, which in my opinion is pretty much useless with the build. If you're having like really bad mana and you really just want to buff it as much as humanly possible, definitely put the point in here. But Ice Armor has pretty low uptime and 25% regeneration is not really all that good. So personally, I would rather allocate my points elsewhere. And then I put three points into Glass Cannon for just extra damage. You have a crazy amount of extra damage, but you take way more damage. So if you've noticed that you're dying a lot, uh, just take the points out of Glass Cannon. Then we're going to go three points into Precision Magic for some free lucky hit. This build is very lucky hit reliant, so that is great, and we'll talk more about that later. And then we get one point into Align the Elements for some damage reduction that stacks up. And then we go two points into Protection. I'd actually rather go three here because it gives you 30% of your max HP as a barrier, so that is incredibly powerful. The barrier is very good because we get extra damage while we have a barrier and extra lucky hit while we have a barrier. So anytime we use teleport, frost nova, ice armor, flame shield, whatever, we're getting an additional barrier effect 
which we can take advantage of in multiple ways. So that's particularly good. And then I have three points into mana shield for the 15% damage reduction. Personally, I would put two points into mana shield and then three into protection because I would way rather have a better juiced up barrier than I would have a little bit of extra DR that isn't active all that often because a lot of time you're not actually going to be spending 100 mana because technically you're skills are actually going to be free through the avalanche key passive. So the uptime on this is unfortunately kind of bad with the way that you play this build particularly. And then we're gonna go into Meteor just for the immobilize. Again, if you don't really like using Meteor, you would take the points out of here and go into some survivability, maybe go into the flame shield heal, maybe go into the ice armor mana, or you could just spec into like um, Inferno for the pull or shatter for like the invulnerability basically. And then we have the most broken thing that Zork has, which is uh, Devouring Blaze. Maybe not the most broken thing. I think Control is probably better, but Devouring Blaze is pretty much the reason you care about Immobilize as well as Control. And this is the reason we use the Fireball Enchant. We deal 60% increased crit damage against burning enemies. And with this build, we have nearly 100% crit chance. And if they are also Immobilized, this bonus gets increased to 150% crit damage. That you're doing 2.5 extra damage, or 2.5 of your damage, just by having the enemy be immobilized, and because you're just applying burn by default with Firebolt. This is ridiculous. Obviously, we have three ranks on our amulet here, but it's by far the best thing to get. This is why immobilize is so good. This is why burn is so good. It's unbelievable. It? If this didn't exist, this build would not be nearly as strong. Now we're just going to max out all the frost passives here. You could take a couple points out of one of these if you wanted to go for some more survivability oriented things. Uh, Permafrost is 15% extra damage against elites. That's particularly good for us. Hoarfrost is just extra damage to frozen enemies, basically, whenever you apply um, Frost Nova. If you wanted more survivability, this is probably what I would take the points out of because the damage isn't entirely necessary. If the enemy's frozen, they'll probably get owned anyways because of control and all the other damage to frozen, but feel free to do whatever you prefer. And then we have uh, three points into Frigid Breeze, which actually has a pretty good chance to generate some mana for us if we end up getting unlucky with our other lucky hit stuff. And then Icy Touch is insane, just 12% extra damage basically, because enemies are permanently vulnerable and um, all of our skills are gonna be cold, right? And then we have our key passive, which is the most important part of the entire build, which is Avalanche. Your frost skills have a 10% chance to make your next cast of ice shards consume no mana and deal 40% increased damage. Ice shards has pretty good lucky hit chance and it's also going to hit multiple enemies via the ricochet and via the pierce. So what our goal is, is to buff our ice shards lucky hit as much as possible. Not as much as possible, you can get away with sacrificing some, but you want to get the lucky hit really good so that you just have avalanche up 24 seven. Not only for the fact that it you know makes your ice shards cost no mana, so you no longer have to deal with mana problems, even on bosses, as you can see in this clip, literally no mana problems at all, infinite mana, and you just have avalanche procs constantly, but also it's 40% damage. If you can get 40% damage pretty much all the time without having to sacrifice damage elsewhere, that's incredibly powerful like you can lose out on a little bit of damage in your paragon board and like on your rings and stuff if you can get way higher uptime on this and the goal is to have pretty much permanent uptime on this you pair this with the other node where you generate some mana right your mana problems are pretty much solved entirely you also pair this with a legendary that makes avalanche passive apply to one additional cast so all you need to do is get it to proc one time and then you'll have two casts that are free mana and 40 percent extra damage so you can just start spamming out eye shards like an absolute psycho and you'll pretty much permanently have avalanche active which is incredibly good when it comes to the rest of the legendaries uh, one of the more important ones is Ice Shards Pierce. If Ice Shards is piercing, it's hitting more enemies, so you get more damage, obviously. But also, it's going to lucky hit based on how many multiple enemies it hits, so you're going to pretty much be permanently lucky hitting with the build, so that is really nice. And then we have Control here. Personally, I would actually put this on the Amulet. Basically, Control is the most broken thing that Sork has because it calculates the damage multiple times based on which status effect they are under. So if they are under Immobilized, Stunned, and frozen you're going to get the damage effect multiple times and it's actually multiplying it by the previous number so this is just stacking like crazy and if you put this on the amulet it's 53 percent increased damage and you can realistically immobilize stun and freeze enemies and literally one shot them and do up upwards of 2 million damage probably up to 2.5 million damage per ice shard so control is insane personally i would put it on the amulet we'll talk about that in a second 
but you pair this with the raiment chest so you get the stun this is pretty much how you get stunned so you get frost nova for the freeze you get meteor or the fist of fate gloves we'll talk about in a second for the immobilize and then you get raiment of the infinite for the stun if you don't have raiment the build will still work really well you'll just want to be looking forward to getting this because the build will work significantly better once you have this but the build will work perfectly fine without it don't worry about it then we have the accelerating aspect this one is a little more optional and you could instead swap this to the prodigy aspect if you're having like crazy mana issues and you don't have enough lucky hit if you're very early into the build 100% swap accelerated because you don't need the attack speed if you don't have mana right so swap to prodigy basically you get cooldown or you get mana anytime you use a cooldown which is an incredibly powerful legendary at this point we simply do not need it but if you get really low cooldown reduction and then you can slap that on that's incredibly powerful when it comes to our amulet here we have elementalist here but i would recommend control instead because you can get very close to crit cap you can get around 90 percent. i think it's like 88.5 when i did the math or something you can get around 89 percent crit chance without having this on the amulet so when you do have this on the amulet if you have perfect gear you are over capping on crit chance and you know obviously anything past 100 isn't doing anything for us we would rather have control be on the amulet because that simply just nets us more damage. If you're very early into the build and you have like no crit chance, but you have a lot of crit damage, then elementalist on the amulet is perfectly fine, especially if you do not have raiment yet. But if you have raiment and you're pretty late into the build, you have all the crit chance that you can possibly get, uh, you want to put elementalist on just like a ring or something, then you would put control on the amulet because of the stacking potential and the massive amount of damage that you can get there. When it comes to the rest of our legendaries, we want the frost nova additional charge so we can freeze more often. We want fists of fate, so this is a little bit controversial. Um, I would not entirely recommend this all the time. If you want your damage numbers to be higher, you don't want to use Fist of Fate because you just lose out on potential damage. The damage effect somewhat mitigates it, but you lose out on crit chance, you lose out on ranks to ice shards. It's just not really a good value pick, but the benefit of Fist of Fate is that, to be honest, your damage is high enough. Like Losing damage does suck for bosses and stuff, but the fact that this applies immobilized with a lucky hit, and we have pretty good lucky hit, basically, you don't have to deal with Meteor anymore, and you can just very brain dead just slap this on, run around, take the points out of Meteor, and just throw a bunch of eye shards, and pretty much everything will just get immobilized, so you always have that damage active. So, I don't know. If you think it's dumb to use these, definitely don't use them. If you really like using them, definitely use them. I would not ever use Frostburn. If you want to use it, I guess, feel free, but uh, I would never use Frostburn. I would just recommend if you have Fists of Fate, just try it out. See how you like it. See how the Immobilize application feels for you. If it feels good, obviously use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. That is my recommendation there. You can pair Fists of Fate with Shared Misery, which not a lot of people do, but I think is particularly good. Even with Meteor, if you get an enemy Immobilized, you have a pretty good chance to spread that CC. And with the Ricochet effect and the Piercing effect on Ice Shards, you have a pretty good chance to Ricochet this. So then you just have more enemies that are Immobilized and also Dazed, which is very good defensively because enemies literally can never hit you if they are Perma-Dazed and Perma-Immobilized via Fist of Fate. If you don't feel like this is giving you too much value, you could intend you could instead go into Ghost Walker's aspect to just give you more movement speed when you are, are unstoppable. So anytime you use your teleport, basically, you just get extra movement speed, which definitely speeds up the build. Uh, next to that, you want to get Edge Masters for extra damage. If you're not using Fist of Fate, that's pretty good. And then on your pants, you want Disobedience, of course, for the big survivability. All right, this video is pretty long, so let's speed run this. Of course, all of these stats will be posted on the website. When it comes to the helmet, this is very particular. You want maximum mana here because you want to be at above 100 mana for Elementalist at all times. So this extra mana gives you more cushion, so you always have that. You want cooldown reduction. That's probably the most important thing. You want lucky hit while you have a barrier. That's very important for giving us lucky hit for our avalanche key passive. So that's really good. And then you could get int for more damage, but personally, I would recommend either getting max HP or total armor percent for the survivability. For the chest, obviously we are using raiment. If you don't have raiment, a normal chest would work perfectly fine. And you'd want to just slap an additional defensive aspect on there, which I'll have posted on the website if you want to know which one to use, because I don't know off the top of my head right now. And then in terms of what stats you want, you would want damage reduction, total armor, max HP, uh, and damage reduction from burning, I believe you can get in the chest. So that would be great DR. If you're dying a lot, I guess you could take raiment off. You just lose a ton of offense, but raiment definitely nerfs your defense by quite a bit. Then when it comes to the gloves, again, you can either use Fist of Fate, or if you have normal gloves, you want literally this exact roll. Lucky hit chance, very good for giving us more lucky hit for Avalanche. Uh, ranks to eye shards, attack speed, 
and crit chance. The most important thing here is getting the ranks to eye shards and crit chance though. Then when it comes to our pants, you want exactly this roll, DR from close, DR, DR from enemies that are burning, and then instead of DR from distant, you could go max HP or total armor. I'd probably go max HP, but DR from distant is not bad either, because a lot of enemies we're fighting are distant. If you are getting like one-shotted by shamans and stuff, the DR from distant is pretty good. And when it comes to the boots, you want mana cost reduction, that's very good. Movement speed, or else you feel like you're in a wheelchair. Ranks of Teleport, and Ranks of Frost Nova. Don't really know the priority list here, because all these are pretty equally important. Probably go for the Ranks of Frost Nova first, and then the movement speed personally, and then mana cost reduction, and then teleport. When it comes to our weapon, you want a Wand on your one-hander, because this is going to give you Lucky Hit by default, and also you get the additional uh, Legendary Aspect by having both a Wand and a Offhand. And then you want Vulnerable Damage. Damage of Crowd Control sucks, you'd rather have Int, crit damage and then you can actually get all stats here it would be particularly good because that is slightly better than the additive damage not going to go into a whole spiel on that but alternative to the uh, all stats you could get damage with core skills would be your best bet there damage of crowd control isn't too bad but it's not active all that often when it comes to the focus this is quite particular you want cooldown reduction because it is a focus so it's going to have cdr on it by default you want crit chance lucky hit while you have a barrier cooldown reduction, and mana cost reduction. The most important thing here is getting the double cooldown reduction, and then the crit chance, and then the mana cost, and then the lucky hit. Uh, the focus gives you a crazy amount of stats that are incredibly powerful with the build. When it comes to the rings, ideally you want them to look like this, where you have vulnerable, crit chance, this crit chance roll sucks, lucky hit chance, and then crit damage. Getting the extra crit chance is incredibly good here, so make sure to max that out, as well as the vulnerable damage if possible. The lucky hit chance, you can make the argument that you don't need, and instead you go for max HP, like this ring is. This ring is pretty much perfect. But if you get the lucky hit chance on the rings, then you could sacrifice some in the Paragon board perhaps. But when it comes to the lucky hit, you're basically just trying to get as much as you can until you feel like you have permanent uptime on Avalanche. Once you have permanent uptime, then you can mess around with dropping some lucky hit here and there to optimize for more damage or more survivability. When it comes to the amulet, good luck. This is very hard to get. You want literally this exact roll. Uh, ranks to Devouring Blaze is simply the most important thing that you can get here. And then ranks to cooldown reduction, or sorry, cooldown reduction. And then ranks to defensive skills, which is pretty much all of our skills, right? Frost Nova, Ice Armor, Teleport, and Flame Shield are all defensive skills. So we want to reduce the cooldown on those. And then we want mana cost reduction. There's not a ton of options here. This is straight up the best thing that you can get. And it is very, very good. When it comes to the Paragon board, the entirety of this will be on the website, and I may mess around with swapping some things, but basically in the first tree, you want to grab Elementalist. Your leveling Elementalist is a pretty bad glyph to slot in first, but once you're like level 100, putting Elementalist in the first board is decent because you can easily get 40 int. But if you're just leveling up, uh, I think you want to put in the Destruction glyph first. I'll have to look into that a little bit, but it will be on the website. For our second board, we go into Frigid Fate, especially if you're leveling. I think this is pretty good because you get a ton of lucky hit chance in this board, and you don't have to invest too many points into it, right? You get 15% here, and then you also get some extra lucky hit with that, with these nodes, and that's really going to help us with our mana through Avalanche uptime, so definitely recommend that. Then we go into Tactician to just give us extra damage after we use a defensive skill, which is all of our skills, and this also buffs the uh, vulnerable damage nodes that are active here. We get a ton of vulnerable damage and a ton of lucky hit in this board, so it's pretty good. And then in our next board, we go into Destruction. This is the, pretty much just the best glyph. We get 97% crit damage with core skills, and it increases the amount of damage that enemies take from us when we have this active, so that's really good. There's also a bunch of good nodes within this board. This is the Burning Instinct board. You just get damage to burning, and enemies are permanently burning because we are applying the firebolt enchant right so that's really good there's also a little bit of max mana here to give you more cushion for elementalist and then into our next board we are going into the ceaseless conduit board so that we can grab control control is incredibly powerful extra damage crowd controlled and 20 percent increased damage to stunned or frozen that's pretty nice there's not really much in this board that we care about we're mainly just grabbing the glyph and getting out and then our next board is searing heat and then we're grabbing flame feeder for damage to burning and 10 percent increased direct damage to burning so this is a pretty good board now let's get into some gameplay again the entirety of the paragon board will be posted over on the website so make sure to check that out when it comes to actually playing with the build uh, i have not personally played with it a ton but basically using your defensive skills properly is incredibly important timing your flame shields not just wasting them timing your teleports timing your frost novas making sure to actually group everything up first making sure to suck everything in with your teleport and then frost novaing and 
If you're using Meteor, you want to make sure to pre-cast your Meteor before you actually suck everything in because there's like a travel time, right? So you want a Meteor, teleport, then everything will get sucked in, it'll get immobilized, and then it'll get Frost nova But again, if you're not using Meteor, you can just put on Fist of Fate, right? And then you don't have to worry about having to time that. And you can pretty easily just run around spamming Teleport and spamming Frost Nova, and the build is incredibly easy to play with. So I just felt like showing you guys some more gameplay because I don't like personally when there's videos that don't have like gameplay, just what it looks like, just going through a dungeon. So I just want to show you guys just some unedited gameplay, just going through a dungeon. As you can see, the build just absolutely blasts. There's not really much you need to do in terms of how to play. Sork is definitely very squishy, so you need to learn how to play around that. You can get some more survivability in different ways, but that's kind of just the problem with Sork, but you make up for it in incredibly high damage. Anyways, that's pretty much going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one, and I will see you guys later.